Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's just been confirmed that Sunderland have announced the official signing of West Ham United 21-year-old centre-back Aji Elise. A bit of a shock, Gonzo. Um, yeah, I mean, shock because I wasn't. There was no build-up to the transfer. I think no shock that he's been sold. You know, if it, he would have been one of the ones I would have expected to either go on loan or be sold. It's, it's, it's clear he's got no future uh, with with the first team. But there was obviously no no build-up. I, I didn't know. So he didn't hear about any leaks. He was going to Sunderland or anything like that. Do we know a fee? Uh, no, there it's an undisclosed fee. I don't know. I'm guessing here. I would imagine it's maybe around the million pound mark or something. Um, just just to confirm, he has joined Sunderland on a permanent fee. It's not a loan move. It's a permanent transfer. He signed a three-year contract with the Black Cats with an option for a further year on the club side as well. Uh, we'll get on to what it means for Sunderland in just a minute because I'd imagine there'll be a lot of Sunderland fans tuning in, listening, thinking, oh, well, let's find out a bit more about our new transfer like we do with other clubs like Flynn Downs and stuff. Um, but I'm gutted, to be honest with you, Gonzo. I mean, it did feel like his days were numbered and the writing was on the wall after that game at Stamford Bridge in particular at the back yeah. end of last season. Like you said, Craig Dawson, the only fit centre-back, and he still didn't get into the team. But there was a little bit of me hoping that had he had a good pre-season, that he might have, if this Diop was leaving, he may be the fifth-choice centre-back, which is obviously lower down the pecking order. And perhaps naively, I looked at the Europa Conference League and thought, well, should we get into those group stages He'd be okay playing Elise in these kind of games. He'd be okay against that kind of opponent. And it felt like an obvious succession plan because while, yes, we've just spent 25 million on a centre back, yes, he would be six choice centre back currently, assuming Diop doesn't leave. We have to take into consideration Dawson and Obona's ages and futures at West Ham. And that in two years' time, I think it's fair to say that neither of them will be at West Ham United. And Elise would still only be 23 years of age. So it felt like, oh, right, his opportunities aren't coming, but surely he's going to get them. Well, it looks like he won't. He's off to Sunderland. And I'm a bit gutted, to be honest with you, Gordon. So I just think it's a bit of a, a shame, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, don't discount that the player wants this. He's... He's, he's nearly 22, as I understand it. He needs to play football now. And he's not going to play football under Moyes. And I've got to be honest with you here, OK? It's it's all very well. I can sit here. And, and I like him. I think he's a talented player. You say about Sunderland fans, I think he's a talented player. And I think he's got some leadership qualities as well. However, um, if I'm picking the squad and if we're doing a build-up for a match... And we've got a Gerd there, and we've got Kurt Zuma, and we've got Dawson, we've got Ogbonna. It's all very well me saying, oh, Moyes won't play the youngsters. Question back to me, would I put him in our first team for the first game of the season or the second or the third game of the season ahead of any one of those centre-backs? No, I wouldn't. And that's the truth of the matter. So you, you, so the moment, and I, you, I agree about the succession plan, but we actually we've got another, albeit more slightly more talented centre-back to do that, who's probably a better age, 18. At least he's better than that to basically be put into cold storage basically for another couple of years at that point he's 23 almost 24 and his career is is massively massively stalled so actually i think this makes sense i mean uh, we, we go back to it again and there, there was after that happened at stanford bridge and even dawson at that point had a sprained ankle and a broken nose. Uh, we keep going back to it. There, there then became no set of circumstances with everybody else injured where David Moyes would use him. At that point, it just became clear. I think this is right for the player. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's a shame because, obviously, on our Patreon channel, we had uh, Tony Carr on there and Tony Carr picked out Elise and Perkins as two outstanding prospects in the academy and they're both gone. Yeah, um, I think the one thing I will say, well, there's a couple of things you can say in favour of selling him, which is what you've just said in regards to his, his chances next season would still be limited, even if he was to remain. We are particularly centre-back heavy in the first team, even if Diop was still to leave. There's still four senior centre-backs ahead of him. And also the youngsters, we've got a lot of young, I know you're referring to Yamal Baptiste, yeah. but if you have a look at the makeup of the Premier League, uh, sorry, the pre-season squads that played at Boreham Wood and Ipswich Town, most of the youngsters were centre-backs. Some of them were playing out of position in order to for the lack of players in those positions. But we've also got a lot of youngsters coming through. Whether they go on and make or not is unlikely. But I think all things taken into consideration, I can see why he wants to go. And what you briefly mentioned earlier was Elise might have wanted this. And if you read his 
words that he's given to Sunderland, not the West Ham. If you go on the official West Ham website, it's obviously at least thanking the club and the fans. But if you go on the Sunderland website and read it, you get the other half of the interview, which is basically saying it would be he and, and the phrase I'm gonna pick out nearly word for word, which sort of stands out a bit was it would have been easier for me to stay so making on as if say i didn't have to come to Sunderland, i didn't have to leave I, i'm not, um, almost implying that he sort of asked for the transfer away from west ham united so that he can go get first team minutes i think he's at the right age for first team football you know when you're fastly approaching 22 it's sort of crunch time a little bit in a career i'd have liked to have seen him loaned out just in case but i do hope we've got some provisions in place, whether it be buyback clauses or sell-on clauses or something, just in case we get it wrong. And this leads me on to my final point in regards to positives around selling him. We don't often get it wrong, selling the youngsters. Um, yes, the club are a bit angry about Sonny Perkins quitting, but that's completely different. We haven't allowed Sonny Perkins to leave. He's left with Elise. We've allowed him to leave. And you have to go back a long, long way until you look at another youngster that's left that we've got wrong. I would argue Reese Oxford's one now. But it's taken a few years for him to build up that sort of ability over in the yeah. Bundesliga before they actually we could have done with him. But you almost forget that four or five years he's had away from West Ham developing as a player to become the player he is today. So I hope it's not one that comes back to bite us in the arse because law of averages, there will be one eventually we do get one that leaves and goes on to become a Premier League player. If only. I think I'm just a bit gutted with him because of the likes of Tony Carr speaking about him. And also Dimitri, when I spoke to Dimitri, the under-23s manager, he picked out Elise as one of the players and basically said that times where he felt Elise could have been playing for the first team, never got called up. And he, as the under-23 manager, used to get a bit hacked off with it, really. He used to sit there watching the first team thinking, why is Elise, in? Why is Elise not in there? Elise could easily go do that job. But um, anything you want to talk about the transfer itself before we talk about the player for the benefit of Sunderland fans, really? Uh, no, I would just echo what you said about the sell-on clause or the buyback clause or something like that. It, do, it does make absolute sense to do that. And I would agree there have been times when I would have played him and some of them were there last season. But those don't apply anymore. As I say, I've, I've got to be honest with myself here. And, and whilst I'm disappointed to leave, I, I say I would ask myself the question, OK, mate, when would you play him? So I'd be talking to myself. Do you know what I mean? When when would I? What I would I drop Zuma from? No, I wouldn't. You know, Ogbonna, no. A Gerd, no. Dawson, no. Uh, so it then goes over to the ladder, and he deserves the chance to to forge a career. And it may well be, you said Reese Oxford. The lad is his name House, uh, um, Aston Villa. Villa. Was he? At, well, I think he possibly was on West Ham's books at one point or another. Yeah, he was. Again, there's been a whole set of circumstances where he's gone away and learnt his trade. And I would suggest perhaps more as, as strikers that come on a scene are instinctive. They just you you hear the commentator say it, they just they just find the space in the box. They they've just got it up there. I think almost more than any other position at centre half, you've got to learn the trade. We saw it in the friendly geo when uh, we played uh, against Savet there um there was one of the time he was on the wrong side of the attacker he got caught it was it, there was another time where he's positionally was out of place that's that's not talent he can kick the ball he can defend he can tackle he can head he's very very talented which i know merges on to the next point but he has to learn the trade the positional stuff and he deserves the chance to get those hundred odd games that is going to be required for him to learn that that trade because uh, he just wasn't going to get it at west ham i've got no hard feelings whatsoever if there are Sunderland fans watching this right now, what would you say? I think you've got a leader, by the way. There's been some lovely stories, which you, um, which I'm hopefully probably Gio will elaborate on, um, where he's shown leadership qualities, where um, which I think is really, really important. He's clearly learned from some of the leadership. We've got some good leaders at West Ham, a bit Declan Rice and Mark Noble was 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 it very as a club captain the very essence of the word. It seems that Elise has learned a lot uh, through him and that sort of has translated uh, down through it. He's technically a very good player. Sometimes you hear that, that this player, this centre-back can also play at full-back. A lot of the times I dismiss it, think I wouldn't want him to play there. I'll tell you what, if you got into a sticky predicament at left, at left back, he could play. There. I'm not saying you've signed him as your left back, but he's technically good enough. A uh, left-footed centre-back, he's big, he's strong, he needs to learn the game. Uh, he's he's quick. I tell you what, I thought he was our quickest defender when we played our first preseason friendly. Uh, there's he's got a lot going for him. You've signed yourself a good player. 
You should have seen that clip um, from Ipswich. Have you seen the clip from the game against Ipswich when he's playing centre back and their striker got put through on goal? And I reckon he had from the halfway line, he had about a twenty yard head start on Elise. He ran onto the ball. By the time he got to the edge of eighteen yarder, Elise nudged him in the back. He is rapid. He's an unbelievably fast centre back. Left footed, six foot four or something, real strong player and I think I think for the championship I think Sutherland have got themselves a fantastic centre back here if he goes on West Ham fans thought he'd make it in Premier League we're you've just heard us speaking about our former under 23s manager about our former academy of football our director of football director of academy academy director of football that was his job role at the end so we've had Tony Carr there both of them expected Aliso to make it West Ham United so don't listen to West Ham fans listen to two people who have got really good CVs in regards to youngsters going into Premier League football clubs and doing it there. They both thought at least they had it. Now, that story, Gonzo's referring to, I'll tell you that as well. That's what Dimitri told us, is when um, he was on the 23s manager at West Ham, there was another under-23s player at West Ham posted something on social media one evening. And when they went into work that day, the, the coach and staff, and they thought, right, we're going to have to speak to this player, ask him to delete that thing off social media, and explain why, explain why you can't have that on your social media. So they went in, they called the player over and basically went to say, can you delete that for your social media? As soon as they asked him, they said, oh, I've already done it. At least they phoned me last night and explained why I had to delete it and got me to delete it. So that is how good a captain he was. He was the equivalent of Martin Noble for the under-23s. You've got a fantastic player, but also a fantastic person. That's what we'll say. Be at West Ham. 14 years, we, we were all hopefully he'll make it, and I still am. I hope this is somebody we've got wrong. Often, 99% of the time, any transfers West Ham do, I hope they're right. But this is one of those rare 1%. I actually hope we've got it wrong, and at least it goes on to become a real good Premier League player. Um, anything else you'd like to add? I've got one or two other things, but for yourself, you've got anything you'd like to add about the player, the transfer, anything? Yeah, yeah, a, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I don't discount it. You know, West Ham can churn out professional footballers just because they might not not everyone goes on and we lose them and they go on to become John Terry right so but you can be a Liam Ridgewell you can be a is it, say Courtney House is that his name you can be a Courtney House you can be a Junior Stanislas a Leon Britton these players all left West Ham and, and were good had good careers you know so um and I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll have a he'll be a good professional footballer at what level? I don't know, but he's got plenty of talent. He's clearly got the right attitude as well. The other thing I would say, particularly about about uh, uh, Tony and Dimitri and what they were saying there, is that I think they were right, particularly a couple of seasons ago. West Ham are not that club anymore. We're not in that situation. Actually, we do have to go out last season, 25, 30 million pound on Kurt Zuma. This season, again, another 25, 30 million pound on a centre back international players this is just where where we are and it's not to sound arrogant or anything like that we were trying to get into europe every season that's it and when you do that you you can't have it both ways you can't you can't be little old west ham who are who are, who are crap and struggling and so we have to go and you know we might have to blood a few youngsters from the academy you've got to be ready to go into the first team and it's something that Tony Carr also said as well, because when we asked him in that interview, we said, what does it what does it mean for a player? This was this was not on the I did a clip version on a forum channel, but this was on the extended version on the Patreon. So what did it mean to a player, a young 20, under 23 player when he gets a call from the manager, the, the first team manager to go training? And Tony said, I always, would always say to him, go and impress. This is this is your chance. Go and do it, you know, because they feel like a million dollars when when the under 23 player, the under 18 player, whatever, the manager's missing a player. Someone's got to go in for some physio work. And, and so I go to the under 23 coach and say, excuse me, can you give me a midfielder, please? So someone will go over. And at that point, that's his chance to impress. I remember an old story of Ian Wright talking about when Joe Cole first turned up for training. Um, they were doing a five aside. And then the end, Neil Ruddock and Ian Wright both asked if they could have Joe Cole on their team. He impressed immediately. You've heard that story. You've heard David, David Moyes talk about the first time Wayne Rooney came into first team training, you know, and it was clearly evident. So you, you, you've you got to, you've got to really make that, make the impression um, when you get it. Uh, but I do feel that the club has changed in the last couple of years. So it was always going to be difficult, difficult for him. And he has to, has to be afforded the chance to go and progress his career. We were, we were holding him back basically. 
Yeah, I think that's a really good point about us almost being too good to some extent. We've moved on a little bit. I think the, his position doesn't help, not just the fact of the numbers at the squad. I think I always say, I've, I've got no proof, it's just an opinion. I think centre-back's a difficult position to bring a youngster in. You bring in a striker, he makes a mistake, it's fine, you can get over it pretty quick. A centre-back makes a mistake, you could find yourself conceding a goal and you're, you're in trouble pretty quickly, really. I think it takes a lot to put a youngster in at centre-back. Also, there's other... There's also other youngsters at the club like Harrison Ashby that we feel will make it at the club. And Moyes just isn't ever going to flood that first team with three or four youngsters at once. He's going to drop in one or two a season and at most, and that is it. He's going to have one or two youngsters in the team. And while they play different positions with Ashby and Elise, he's clearly more confident that Ashby's going to make it. So I would expect him to be a part of the first team squad next season. And I'm, I just can't see Moyes ever having three youngsters in the first team at once that he uses on a regular basis. I just can't see it. Um, it is a shame because you want to see the youngsters come through the academy and make it in your first team. It's sort of dream world, ideal world situations as a football fan. But we don't live in one of them, unfortunately. And things like this, transfers like this, is just a reminder sometimes that football clubs don't really work how you like them to work in, in, in your head if you want. And it's a shame because I was always confident at least he was going to make it at West Ham. When you first saw him, when he was 16 years old, um, he was always playing for the under-18s. And when he was 17, he was playing for the under-23s and stuff. He was yeah. always well ahead of his age group. Very comfortable on the ball. Comes out the defence with the ball at his feet. A really good passer, really quick, really strong. There's not much going against him. The only thing going against him is experience. And the hardest thing we found for Elise is to give him the experience. So it's a bit of the chicken and the egg thing, really. We, we can't afford to give him experience, but we can't play him without the experience. So what do we do? Um, I would have liked to have seen us loan him out for a season. But this gives Elise now a chance of really propelling and fast-tracking his career. Because in 12 months' time, we could be talking about how Elise was one of the best centre-backs in the Championship. We see it quite often. Players go from a Premier League club to the Championship, centre-backs especially, in one year, bang, they look like the best one in the league. Mark Guy, last season, Caldwell at Huddersfield, alone from Chelsea, bang, one season, looks like one of the best in the league. Hopefully, Elise goes and does that. Really good club. Big club for him to go to as well, Sunderland, just back in the Championship. Hope it works out for him. I hope it works out for Sunderland. Any final words for yourself, Gonzo, then we'll disappear. Ah, just wish him luck, honestly. Wish him luck and, and good luck, Sunderland, as well. You got yourselves a, a good player there. You know, you really do. It, it's um it is a massive shame it didn't work out for him at West Ham. But as Callum said, you know, right player, wrong time. Um yeah, look, looking forward. Actually, I'll be checking in on him. Look, look, I don't mean actually popping around his house, by the way, but I will be looking at Sunderland results and well, see. I would. If you if you invite me around, I'd go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, depends what kind of brand of Hello. team he uses. And assuming there's biscuits available, I'll happily mm. pop in and check on him. And this is, now this he's up, is we might, the pair of us, yeah. Now he's up in Sunderland, he might not know anybody. I'm willing to uh, to go and become his friend if he wishes. But yeah, I think um, you do this sometimes, don't you, as, as football fans? While you are a West Ham fan first and foremost, sometimes you become a fan of the player as well. And you keep an eye out for him. Just like Swansea City fans are going to do with Flynn Downs now he's at West Ham. They're going to keep an eye out for him and see how he gets on. I think West Ham fans will do it with Adji Elise as well. We've done it with the likes of Freddie Sears, uh, Reese Burke, Elliot Lee. We've done it with all the youngsters over the years. Elise will be no different. Hopefully West Ham got this one wrong. Hopefully David Moyes got this one wrong. But as Gonzo said, best of luck to him. And suddenly you've got yourself a potential diamond on your hand there. Uh, very capable at championship level. Look forward to finding out. Should we leave it there, my friend? I think so, mate. We covered it all. There you go. Let us know what you think of the transfer in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel. Myself, Gonzo. Catch you in a bit.